Why is mercury so bad? It is a toxin through and through to our nervous systems. It can suppress our immune system. It can increase risk of infertility and cancer. Mercury is even a hormone mimicker. That is correct. High levels of mercury or lead may also increase risk of neurological diseases like Parkinson's and ALS. Mercury and lead in food. Hey everybody, welcome back to Dr. Ashley, your go-to channel for everyday holistic health tips for the times we live in, also known as eco-medicine. Consider hitting the subscribe button to stay updated on the latest health tips. Mercury has unfortunately seeped into the environment and then into our food supply from a number of sources, including coal-fired power plants, certain types of manufacturing, and burning of waste. And where has it gone? In water and soil and even the air. In water, sources that cause buildup of mercury ends up in fish, a number of crops of rice, and even wine. Sadly, mercury is here to stay for the time being. Now, why is mercury so bad? It is a toxin through and through to our nervous systems. It can suppress our immune system. It can increase risk of infertility and cancer. Mercury is even a hormone mimicker. That is correct. High levels of mercury or lead may also increase risk of neurological diseases like Parkinson's and ALS. So let's discuss what we need to be careful of. Number one, medicinal herbs. Sadly, a number of countries do not have strict regulations on heavy metal contamination in the soil for medicinal plant use. So it has been often found that medicinal herbs can be contaminated with not just mercury, but lead and cadmium and thallium and a number of other heavy metals. Now, certain countries tend to have more issues with this than others. So I'd recommend getting herbs from a local organic source in the United States, Europe, or Canada. There are other countries with also safer, cleaner herbs and local organic operations. These are good things to know about. Another option, if you just aren't sure, is to see if there's third-party testing for heavy metals. This is somebody who has no connection to the company making the product, and they do deep analysis on what is actually in the product. Now let's talk about foods. High fructose corn syrup unfortunately has been found to have some levels of mercury, but hopefully you aren't eating this because it's not good for your liver, it's not good for your body, and it can cause blood sugar issues. Now let's talk about rice. Unfortunately, very unfortunately, rice products and rice flours do have significantly higher arsenic levels, but they also are known to sometimes have higher levels of methylmercury. Why? Rice field soil is flooded with water and that water can be contaminated with mercury. Particularly rice fields in Asia, in India, and sometimes rice fields found in China. Although you cannot avoid rice all the time, it is just something to know. Next, artificial food coloring. Certain brands of this have also been found to have heavy metals. So something to think about when you're buying food and it's always better to get natural without artificial coloring anyway. Wine. Now, surprisingly, wine can be quite high in mercury and lead, frankly. There are a number of countries with high levels of heavy metal contamination in wine. Italy, Argentina, Brazil are actually the safest with the lowest levels of mercury. So if you are a wine drinker, it's something to consider. Unfortunately, I haven't seen that many studies on U.S. wines, so I don't know as much about those, but one thing you can do is look online and see a list of countries where wines tend to have more heavy metal contamination, because if they do, the mercury levels, again, are quite high. So please watch your intake of wine, and daily is likely not a good idea. <laughs> Last but not least, seafood. I have personally found that patients consuming sushi, even a couple times a month, have higher red blood cell levels of mercury than those not eating sushi. And this is cooked or uncooked because the mercury still stays. Fish with the highest levels are tuna, grouper, snapper, orange roughy, marlin, lobster, some cods, and larger king size mackerels. There are smaller mackerels, which is a different story. Swordfish, tilefish, and shark. 
but there are relatively high levels in a number of other fish. Seafood may not have as many heavy metals, and these are smaller guys that we're talking about here, shrimp, scallops, and crabs, but there can be other contaminants in them. So some fish that are a little bit lower in metals are sole, trout, salmon, and flounder, but remember to look for sustainable sources. Note that other toxins also can accumulate in fish. I always feel like I'm bringing bad news when I convey this information, but I think it's really important to know which foods tend to have higher levels of metals. Don't forget, it's not that you have to cut everything out of your diet, it's just to be very aware of what you're eating on a regular basis. This being said, we are at the point with mercury contamination on the planet that we can only avoid the biggest sources all the time, such as the very contaminated wine and the large fish. But really reducing intake of the more mercury contaminated foods is definitely an important lifestyle choice. This is Dr. Ashley. Thank you for joining me for another episode. I hope these tips have been informative and don't forget to subscribe for future updates on how you can live a healthier life. <music>